principle behind the uh, protein engineering work we do is to go back to the DNA, which is a genetic material. So site-direct immunogenesis is really the ability to change one base pair of DNA. So DNA is made up of A, C, G, and T, and long strings of them. The ability to go in and just take one of those and change, say, a G to a T or something without changing the rest of the DNA. So it allows you to have very fine control over mutating a particular gene and creating an effect in a particular protein. You can add things, you can delete things, you can change things. We understood that when mutations in DNA arose, they could alter uh, the RNA, which in turn alter the protein, and create proteins with very different functions. And by systematically and precisely changing that DNA, uh, we systematically change the protein and we can start to understand how those changes affect particular genes, particular proteins, and what that means for the function of those genes. So it, it really allowed us to fundamentally understand how things work at a much better level. Which opened up a whole realm of uh, possibility. So in other words, what I'm saying now is this technology has proved out to be useful in a, in a practical cell in medicine. I first heard about Mike Smith in 1993 when he won the Nobel Prize. I was a high school student then, I was here in Vancouver, and I always knew that I wanted to study genetics. And so the news of a local geneticist winning a Nobel Prize was such a big deal. It created a vibe, it created an enthusiasm, and it created an awareness of science, and, and created a hero. And Michael was ideally positioned, both in terms of personality and intent, to be that, that hero. The alarm, I normally have my alarm go off at six, and so I woke up at five to seven and put on the news uh, and actually heard the announcement as a news broadcast, which is an interesting situation, because very few people hear good news on the news, and I did, of course. Mike Smith winning the Nobel Prize for chemistry, it did change things. You know, suddenly your phone's ringing all the time. Everybody wants you on every board and things. Uh, Michael was uh, the kind of person, for example, who could pick up the telephone and call the prime minister this kind of thing was going on all the time. You ask any person on the street, you know, what's the best prize in science, they'll say the Nobel Prize. So it became a household name in Canada, and um, he actually used that as a platform to then go talk to politicians in Ottawa and everywhere else, and he, and he actually leveraged it immensely just to get the discussion of why we need science in Canada and the world. That if there were, ever was a time for Michael to uh, put his stamp on issues that he cared deeply about, the Nobel Prize was, was probably that time. And, and he took that not as an opportunity to advance an agenda, he took that as a serious social responsibility. As somebody who was an undergrad student at the time, I'd always been told, you know, there's not much of a future for life sciences in BC, you might want to think about going elsewhere. But Michael's Nobel Prize changed all of that, and what he chose to do, with the legacy around the Nobel Prize, changed all of that. He lent his name to the initiation of this activity, and, and that was critically important. And he played formative roles in the establishment of all kinds of institutions, both to uh, promote and to fund. Uh, this style of research where there was nothing before. You know, there's the Michael Smith Laboratories, of which I'm in. It's a research group. There's uh, the Michael Smith Genome Sequencing Center, the Michael Smith Health Research Foundation. One of the coolest things that Michael Smith did with his Nobel Prize money was donate part of it to places like Science World and the Society for Canadian Women in Science and Technology. So he was investing in the community and he really created the ecosystem and the support infrastructure that allows researchers like me to, to stay here. Every time you do something in BC you realize, you know, there are amazing things associated with Mike and science in BC. His vision and his investment into the community have really transformed us into a world-leading hub of innovation filled with amazing researchers and absolutely incredible discoveries. Michael planted seeds that uh, have evolved and, and I think he would be very pleased to see that, that initiatives to which he had lent his name continue. This convinces you that any other Canadian is a you can make a career in Canada and you can do research here that's as good as any research in the world and, and get the recognition of your peers throughout the world. 
and, uh, and I think it's a very important message for young Canadians to get, and I do think it's also a very important message for politicians and bureaucrats who decide on science policy and how much money is given out. And if one of the things that can come out of that is both those groups, the young people and the administrators and bureaucrats, get that message and react to it, then I think uh, it would please me more than anything else.